in 2010, Columbia Pictures decided that it was worthwhile to spend over $100 million to have Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg star together in a buddy cop comedy. Makes sense, as Ferrell was probably the top movie funny man of the time, and Wahlberg has been a highly bankable star for some time now. The directing of this movie would be done by Adam McKay, who also came up with the story and was in the directorial chair for several of Farrell's other well-received movies, such as Talladega Nights, Anchorman, and Step Brothers. These three ingredients would seem to be a good mix for a fun and entertaining flick, and much of what I had heard about the other guys in the years since its release got me pretty excited for what I was about to finally watch. And now, after finally having done so, I can certainly see why so many people find it so funny. But at the same time, I can also understand why it has such a ho-hum Rotten Tomatoes audience score. Yeah. Hey, 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 you shut your face! If we want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up there. The Other Guys begins with superstars Samuel L. Jackson and Dwayne The Rock Johnson in a high-speed, guns-blazing pursuit of a group of drug dealers. This sequence is a good deal of fun, but then the punchline comes in the aftermath when we find out that the guys they were chasing had only a small quantity of marijuana in their possession, and that the chase would cost the city over $12 million in damages, basically one-thirteenth of this more recent disaster. But the crowds cheer anyway because these guys are larger than life, wear cool shades, and date Kardashians. It's a funny bit of skewering of buddy cop tropes that lands really well and makes for a very promising start to the movie. Meanwhile, another pair of detectives in the background, the titular other guys, if you will, are on the bottom rung of the popularity ladder, as one of them is a desk jockey named Alan, and his partner Terry was a once promising officer whose biggest claim to fame was accidentally shooting New York Yankee star Derek Jeter in the tunnel during the World Series. Fun fact, had Terry moved to Boston, he'd basically be a superhero. Fast forward a bit and we get another crime in progress for our two heroes to take on. Jackson and The Rock end up on the roof just as the criminals zip line away and cut the wire. The heroes decide that the only way down is to aim for the bushes. During the funeral, Terry decides that he and his partner have an opportunity to make a name for themselves and become the city's new heroes. Alan is reluctant to do anything so extreme, and they have competition from others in their department, particularly a pair of ball busters played by Rob Riggle and Damon Wayans Jr. Terry looks to take on any action he can find so he can finally show what he's capable of. I'm a peacock! Flying into a rainbow! While Alan looks to stay on a more quiet case he's been looking into regarding illegal permits. And wouldn't you know it? It's actually Alan's case that turns out to be the big break our main characters need to become the heroes at least half of them are looking to be. Now I could go into a further description of the plot as best I can from here to try to explain what's driving our main characters, but honestly, the plot is something of a hot mess and sadly doesn't add much value to the comedy or the movie itself. It's convoluted, dull, and oddly seems to be trying to act as some kind of social commentary on the abuses of capitalism and the people who never seem to have to answer for their crimes. And there was a moment that I thought I was possibly projecting when it came to this film's intentions, but then the credits happened and hit me over the head with it. In a way, this isn't too surprising since Adam McKay would later go on to direct The Big Short, which was a comedy drama about this very subject and a very good film. And in that movie, the commentary made sense because it was the subject of the plot and it was meant to be taken seriously. But in the other guys, it feels odd and out of place, particularly those credits. It is interesting information, sure, but what's it doing here in a comedy? The good news, however, is that when it comes to the dialogue and characters, the other guys is incredibly funny. The segments that show Terry and Alan's backstories are hilarious, particularly the latter where we learn that Alan was basically a pimp in college whom everyone called Gator. Gator don't play no You hear, you feel me? Gator never been about that. Never, never been about playing no On top of that, Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg are a great duo, and the rest of the cast is excellent as well. Sam Jackson's and The Rock's brief roles are stellar. Eva Mendez is both funny and jaw-droppingly gorgeous. Steve Coogan is great as an incompetent billionaire. And Michael Keaton is an absolute scene-stealer every time he's on screen. Because I don't want no scrubs. You're not aware that's a TLC song. I have no idea what you're talking about. All things considered, The Other Guys is a comedy that has more than enough positive value to make it worth recommending. 
The dialogue is sharp and witty, the sight gag's on point, and there's a stylistic flair to it that lets you know that the big budget didn't go to waste. At the same time, though, it is a shame that the plot weighs down what could have been a genuine classic. It's trying to say something about both action hero cops and big business schemes, and it's pretty clear in hindsight that had it stuck solely with the former, the film likely would have been much better for it. My thanks to everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more content to come. Until then, God bless you, and Gordspeed.